my friends this is Gosha and today I am very happy to introduce you to this uh, new and very important uh, mini series I say mini but it's gonna be quite quite long actually uh, especially the second video quite long in the explanation here and um, this first video is going to be the conversation that Dale Harder had with Yaski about his own design of the med bed so this is like the first part where they are discussing both of them uh, his idea dale hill is showing some details and drawings and files but of course uh, we are not showing that in the video it's still in a process of development now for those of you who are new to the channel dale harder is an ex nasa engineer he's an expert in many different things like for example laser technology and he has had the opportunity to talk to the Telecom crew, some of the members, and uh, he continues uh, sometimes to talk to Yaski as well, as it was in this case. And then also, uh, we are actually beginning with the interview. So in the beginning, there's gonna be the interview with Dale where he's describing his design and his idea, and that's what we talk about. Now, in the next video, in the next part, this is where Yaski actually describes in detail the operation of the med pod that they use in Taigeta. Uh, and there are two different kinds. There is a dry kind and there is a wet kind. So uh, the, the wet kind is what we are focusing on because this is, what some, this is something that is mostly use, used. So first Yaski will describe in a second video how they work, how they operate those Taigetan med pods. And then in, in the next part, there's going to be questions and answers. So there are some questions from me, Dale also participates. And then there are some questions from you. I asked you to, ask, to give me your questions. So I passed some of them to Yaski, she's responding to them. And then also Robert is passing uh, his own questions. So it's gonna be like a complete video of questions and answers. I'm pretty sure that a lot of your questions will be answered there. And then in the next part, that is still in my development stage, I think I want to share with you um, other types of pods that exist in Taigeta, but that later. So enjoy the video and sorry for the sound quality, by the way, uh, this interview here with Dale Harder has had some, um, had some audio problems. Um, thank you to all of you in the Spanish community who uh, tried to improve the sound. They did. The original was worse, but I think it's understandable. I think you can you can hear very well what uh, Dale is trying to convey here. So enjoy, and then I'm going to see you in the next video where Yaski will describe in detail how these pods work. Hello friends, this is Gosha from Cosmic Agency and I'm very excited today because uh, we are going to start this mini series, mi mini series but important series about uh, med, med pods, uh, Tigetan med pods uh, mainly, but in the first part uh, we're actually going to have Dale Harder here uh, with us. Hey, hey, hey Dale, how are you? Hello, hello. Hello. Nice to see you as well. And the reason why I invited Dale for this part is because actually um, Dale, Yaski and myself, we had a chat together uh, about this topic of the pod, uh, med, med pods. Sorry, because I'm com confusing with Spanish. Med pods. And Dale had a conversation with Yaski about his own design, some kind of a prototype that he's he will explain. That, 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 that he's working on. Uh, now, it's, of course, it's not, it's not what they have in Taigeta, and Dale, you will explain why we still have a, a way to go here to develop those technologies, but uh, he did have a conversation with her about his own ideas, and he shared some drawings and pictures and files, and he will share here with you today uh, how it went, the conversation with Yaski, and he will tell us more about his design. So, Hey Dale, um, now how 
how would you want to start this? Would you first prefer to explain a little bit about your idea and then how your conversation with Yaski went? Or what would you like to do first? Maybe that. Explain what, what are you working on? Yeah, uh, I've been working on uh, MedPods uh, with uh, various people for a number of years. Uh, some with a Randy Kramer for about five years. And uh, every time we'd seem to get some funding, it would disappear. And then uh, I worked with uh, another group with uh, Simon Parks, trying to get med beds available. Uh, really, you know, good quality holographic med beds and so forth. And again, same thing. Every time we get close to the dad distribution, then the money disappears, the distribution disappears, you know, the usual stuff. So we're always fighting with some aspect of the negative or regressive and the ball and so forth, uh, preventing us from getting these things out. But in any case, I kind of got, yeah, I would say aggravated, if you will, disappointed with the so-called med pods and devices that are available on the market today. Uh, they might touch upon one small aspect of what is needed in a med pod. And then you've got people doing things like the rife tubes and you've got the uh, people who stick magnets under beds and, and uh, just all of these, uh, and some of them with some more sophisticated electronic devices working on different frequencies and or and you get light panels and stuff like that. So, uh, but they, they fall far, far short of what a med pod really is and what it should do. So I began to uh, uh, take my knowledge, my remembrance of our Tegetan material, talks that I had with Swaru 9 as well as Swaru and Yazi uh, and others and uh, began to put together the idea of how to make med pods that are very sophisticated um, uh, that are, are using off-the-shelf materials so they're relatively inexpensive to build. We don't need millions and millions of dollars. Uh, by my estimate, a very sophisticated, high-quality med pod that can do an extreme amount of things. We're looking thirty to $50,000 in my estimate. And so what I would like to do is find a way, and I, I made drawings, and I've made sketches, and I've made uh, computations, and I've got lists of equipment and so forth and so on. But what I'd like to do is find a way to fund that in very, very small amounts, five or $10 donations, if you will, uh, without having investors. Investors demand returns and want control. I've had several companies in my life lost the companies because of those very same things. I don't want to repeat that, nor do I wish to advertise this as all oh, the end all be all for medical healing because obviously I'm going to start butting heads with the FDA and the drug people and the hospitals and the doctors and the whole nine yards. Don't want to do that either. We'll call it recreational, we'll call it the meditation, we'll call it whatever you want, but something relatively simple and non-invasive. However, the whole design for it, I won't give all the details at this point, but it's based on the same techniques that we used in the Tegetan and uh, uh, Universal med pods that are out there now. So we're going to be using frequency because almost everything in the universe that exists is either energy or frequency, and, and, and they're in a time, of course, and everything that exists everywhere within the ether um, is based on having its own particular frequency or harmonics of frequencies. And so that defines what that item is, whether it's an atom, uh, a glass, a cup, a person, a plant, whatever. All right, so I use the principles from what Tesla was doing with 369 and also 12-based math and realize that frequency is the key, uh, along with all the standard medical uh, equipment. So imagine, if you will, a pod that you get into that can uh, place a holographic image over the body of either a damaged heart or a liver or lungs or different things or cancers, and by tuning certain frequencies and anti-frequency to a cancer cell, for example, 
much in the same way that when a person holds a glass, a crystal goblet, and sings a note, that that resonance eventually destroys that glass. It bursts. Well, you can do that with cancer cells, too. And what you do is you cause them to resonate to the point of destruction. Now, that frequency will only harm cancer cells, but it won't bother normal cells. So you can eradicate cancers and things from the body doing these techniques and other aspects of healing. So based on that and using very high quality holograms, projecting these images over these organs of the body, it's possible to modulate those holograms as you would in radio or radio waves or modulated waves, uh, frequency, modulate that picture to vibrate at the healthy level of the healthy cells and thereby force the cells to start vibrating at a healthy frequency and you regenerate the organ that way. This is much in the same way that the uh, pods would work on, say, the ship, the Toleka, or any of the, uh, the med pods out there that are universally used. There are other aspects of that, of course. And uh, uh, so imagine, if you will, like when you go to the hospital, a large complex uh, or, or a control center with computers and, and screens and so forth for all the controls where you monitor a person's vitals and all the various aspects of the pod. Now, people have been exposed, uh, in many cases, uh, to either dry med pods or wet med pods. And I'll cite some examples for that. So, dry med pods, you'll see those in the movies Passengers, uh, or you'll see it in uh, Elysium. Those were dry med pods. So, those two movies I recommend you watch to get familiarized with the dry med pod. The wet med pod was used pretty much exclusively in the Star Wars movies. So, when Luke Skywalker got hurt, cut off his hand, the whole thing, they immersed him in a big tube. He was floating in this liquid and he was literally breathing the liquid and so forth. That's what our med pods are, wet med pods are. You are immersed in an oxygenated liquid, you breathe the liquid. And so the work is done either in a wet phase or it's done in a dry phase. So those are some of the, cap the capabilities and, and possibilities. Okay, and before you continue, uh, the dry and wet pods, uh, dry and wet pods um, technology is what they have in Tageta, and it's what uh, Yaski will be explaining in the next video. In the next video, we'll go into the detailed conversation with Yaski where she explains all that. Uh, technology and uh, where she explains that the wet pots is what is really ne uh, used by them uh, mainly um, and she also mentioned that your design reminds her more of the of the dry pot technology uh, yeah. which by the way that, that that conversation we are going to share right now that the uh, yes he had with Dale about his design uh, do you want to maybe play play that video right now for the people uh, the, the the video with your conversation? Yeah, we're ready. Okay, so uh, here we go. Originally in English, December 2022. Conversation with Dale Harder. Hello, little, little sister. I have been working on med pods or med beds for some time now obviously for personal as well as humanitarian reasons. My theories and hopeful designs are based on resonance. I am a great believer in Tesla's work and do retain some knowledge from home. So believing that all is energy, resonance, and harmonics, I reasoned that if every particle, atom, molecule, in existence, in the ether, etc., has its own signature, its own resonance, then each is individual and has a response or resonance. That being the case, as a singer can hold a glass and hit the right note of resonance of a crystal goblet with enough time and enough energy, the singer may shatter the goblet, correct? Yes, that's the case. So, if an application of this resonant energy is applied to, say, a cancer cell, it would be possible to cause them to implode or explode 
but not touch a healthy cell that does not resonate at the same frequency as the bad one. Selected resonance can destroy disease, viral agents, bacteria, etc. I am sure you know where I'm going with this. Yes, the cancer one would have a slower resonance frequency. Lower, basically, and a slower metabolism to a practically no cellular metabolism. Now, I have designed a system using available tech off the shelf and much more to begin the basis for my med pod or med bed. Still highly sophisticated in comparison to most med beds and med tech that are here now. You would need to know the frequency of each tissue, if not each individual cell, for it to work as best as possible. How are you going to, or planning to, measure the resonance frequency of each tissue? Yes, yes. Much work has been done over the centuries here that give many of these frequency and resonance is in such experimental work. Referencing them will help to save time. Other work will have to be carried out by me or other constituents. Also, in order to heal any tissue, you need to first remove what is causing the damage in the first place, or else the pod's efforts will be useless. Yes, understood. Thank you. First remove and destroy, then heal. Just stating the obvious for the record. <laughs> Thank you again, but valuable nonetheless. You need to understand what caused the cancer cells to appear in the first place, in order to remove the aggressor. I agree, because all starts on another plane and works its way down, not up as most believe. Speaking of a human body as having many etheric layers and the finer and finer energy levels. So most problems occur in the finer levels and work their way down to the physical, standard, spiritual stuff. Anyway, this is just one aspect of my pods. Also, the one being healed must consent to being healed. That's right, being that all illness is a somatization or manifestation of an idea. The problem is when that damaging idea is rooted deep in the subconscious or unconscious. So the subject has no idea what is going on, nor why it has come up with an illness, any illness, not only cancers. So it all starts with a watch what you are thinking. But once the unconscious dynamic of thought has been rooted, it is terribly difficult to reprogram it. It is hard enough to even know it is there and to understand it as a first step to removing that thought. Please go on. Okay, thank you. So you get the idea of where I'm starting. Now, please bear with me for a moment and I will load some files. Medbed sensors and electronics envision details of what a prototype bed would have. So, working on many aspects of healing, including the resonance effect, laser holograms, sound, etc. Next file is healing devices. Last one is personal EMP device. Does any of this make sense? Do you see the crude drawing of the med pod and the cell with the coil around it? Looking at healing devices one, I see it's good, yes. My only concern is that it's not enough to simply place the subject inside the magnetic field. Yes, if it is of sufficiently high frequency, benefits will be noticed. But what I mean is that for it to work best, you need to modulate the frequency of the field based on the frequency of the subject, tissues, cells. 
Okay, the top rendition is a glass or poly cylinder that comes down over a person with a large coil around it, say one quarter inch copper tubing as is shown. I looked at all your list of sensors as well. Thank you. This device is designed to use a high energy magnetic impulse or EMP to irradiate the body with the pulse and its purpose is to eradicate nanobots, microbots, and tracking electronics. It can even eliminate uh, non-carbon based life forms such as alumina or silica based. Obviously only a body without any metal in it would be able to enter the device. Unless you can focus the device on a specific area. Yes, I can. Okay. The pod below is a polycylinder with all the above electronics and controls for the med bed, placing the person in a low frequency state uh, by headphones, brain entrainment, etc. Then the work can begin by surrounding the body in various resonance fields and or focused field fields using my coherent sound wave technology. Dale, did you see Yashi's previous question? It was, for it to work best, you need to modulate the frequency of the field based on the frequency of the subject tissue's cells. Can your pod do that? The device is really one of a kind treatment to eradicate the body of bio and nanotech devices, not intended for a healing per se, that is for the actual med bed. And yes, correct on the modulation. This is shown in the electronics list. So it's not for healing and healing cancers, etc. Not the upright vertical cylinder, no. Ah, uh, okay. Got it. Okay, go on. The horizontal med bed is for healing. So we are looking at a confluence of devices and many actual capabilities. Remember the Philadelphia experiment? Teleporting a warship using high energy fields with disastrous results for the crew. This was caused by immersing the USS Eldridge in a non-modulated field that did distort space-time for it. That was the problem. Also, the lack of field uniformity as it was not strong enough for the total mass of ship and crew. Same case here. It is useful for the subject, but I insist on the importance of modulation. Yes, little little sister, agreed, and thank you. I do remember the Eldridge and the crew, even met one of them once. Now, uh, imagine the control console wrapping around the operator and the device's position appropriately, like a hospital and going for an MRI or CAT scan. Your med bed reminds me more of a dry medical bed used here. Wet ones work with different principles. A dry one looks a lot like an automed pod as seen in various movies like Elysium or like Prometheus. Yes, far too complex for now, but maybe eventually. I think you are right on the money with it. I do understand where you are going with it, and I love your conclusions. Thank you. I am honored. I think you can get very interesting and good results. The simple fact that you can get the overall frequency of the subject's body up will alleviate many ailments, especially cancers. Okay, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this part. We are back, we are back with Dale and we'll continue uh, discussing these ideas. Okay, so uh, again, my question from before the video was, she compared your design to the dry pot technology. Uh, would you like to comment on that? Yeah, at this point in time, um, the dry pod is probably the best approach given the certain limitations on technological aspects of, of what is needed 
Uh, so my intent is to produce or try to get produce the prototype. Once you have a working prototype using sound and uh, using, uh, because I produce some of the most unique speakers in the world, audio speakers for stereo work, uh, they are coherent sound drivers and uh, they're perfectly phased in time and uh, no, no crossovers and things like that that are used in speakers. So these are the closest thing to the highest level quality of sound that we can produce on this planet, say a, an exotic, these are exotic, but a more exotic speaker which is called a plasma driver. Plasma drivers have not been perfected even though we're working on them. Uh, they have not been perfected and they do produce prodigious amounts of ozone, which is not always a desirable aspect. So ozone can be used in a med pod, but that's not something that we're striving for. So using the highest quality sound and therefore the highest quality reproduction of frequencies, which are paramount to the use of the med pod, wet or dry, this is part of the technology that I will incorporate in what I have designed. Um, so looking at those limitations and the fact that when you're looking at a price tag, say thirty to fifty thousand dollars, which is really nothing in technology terms, um, once the prototype is achieved and we start getting results, then it's possible to add to that prototype more things and, and try more and more uh, pieces of technology which are useful. Okay. So we will do that uh, as time proceeds. But uh, so I've laid out the plan so far. I have the drawings and various things that I'm working on, and uh, you know, so I've been working at this for a while. And it's one of the ways I'm hoping that I can serve and give something back to humanity too uh, while I'm here. So that, that's part of the plan. So far, uh, little sister seems to think that that's a, a good idea, and that uh, that I'm pretty much on track. And like I said, you know, there are certain technological limitations at this point in time, at least off the ship. Yeah. Was there anything in the conversation that uh, Yasky said that surprised you or threw you off or uh, something you wanted to hear or something you didn't want to hear? No, I would say pretty much we were both in agreement, uh, probably close to 100%. I relied a lot on what I brought with me. Uh, as far as my memories, uh, uh, getting memories and so forth, and also what I know here as a scientist and engineer in technology. So I have to work between the two. And she added more interesting points, of course, uh, but, uh, you know, like I said, uh, and, and define those things as what can be accomplished with a really good medpod and what cannot. So we covered all of those kind of details, which you've seen or heard in the video. Uh, and, uh, you know, so, but at this point in time, I'd like to go way, way beyond just these little tiny devices and things that everybody's messing with and spending a great deal of money on and getting marginal results. I think it's possible, and I really would like to give that an opportunity. So, you know, I, like I said, I, I present it, nothing more. What's the difference between, I I mean, because you are talking about the med pod, your design is a med pod or is it a med, 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 med bed? Med bed, med pod. Actually, okay. I call it the pod sometimes or whatever, because imagine, uh, and you will see this in the various movies if you choose to watch them. Again, it's passengers and Elysium for the drop pods. But a person basically gets onto a bed and slides into or is covered over by the top of a, a, a what looks like a glass cylinder. Uh, typically, this would be polycarbonate, and uh, it would and be enclosed on the uh, ends or have a door on it enclosed. This could be turned into or used as a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. It's used as a uh, sound chamber. It's used as many different aspects. It has air filtration, oxygen, and, and medical oxygen filtration. Again, all part of the control. So it's a sophisticated device that you get in and are treated with. It's not just something like an armband or something you wear on your head or anything like that. But it will use light technology. It will use various frequencies of light, like people use red light panels uh, for 
uh, really of, of skin conditions and muscle aches and different problems or even circulation and stuff, things like that. But all of that will be incorporated into this med bed along with laser technology, sound technology. So I'm going, I'm trying to blow it all out here and, and go way beyond just a simple device. This is the kind of device that you would go, like you go to the hospital for an MRI or CAT scan and you kind of lay down in this thing and you get to uh, get through. So that's what I'm kind of going for. And again, the aspect of it is pretty simple. I think we should make this uh, kind of thing relatively available or affordable, if not even free, to people to use. You know, the problem again is like is fighting the establishment. Okay, and now you mentioned some of the conditions that that this device would treat. Can you just enumerate some more uh, conditions that this is designed to, to 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 target? Like, what is it supposed to heal? I'm talking about your specific design. Um, this kind of design, I think, when we first start off, we should be able to heal diseases of various types. We should be able to eradicate viruses, bacterial and viral infections. We should be able to. Um, uh, to uh, either reinforce or regrow or regenerate bad organs, liver, kidney, lungs, different things like that. Uh, we should be able to uh, help people with uh, disorders, uh, say blood and circulation for the mind and, and so forth or for the brain. So uh, various aspects. It's not sophisticated enough at this point to do uh, genetic mapping or genetic uh, recoding which is an aspect of the actual uh, med, med beds in, in, on Teleka and so forth. I mean, so, uh, you know, there are various questions that people ask, which yeah, I'm sure we'll cover at some point, about disorders and um, ADHD and various things like that. Can this be fixed and can this not be fixed? Mostly what we're dealing with is correcting the genetic template to be as its original print. Wait, 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 are you talking about your design or targeted metal? Our, my design as well as their design. Okay. My design is the beginning level of that. Theirs is a much more sophisticated level of that. With their AI computers and so forth and all our technology and that, uh, they're able to rewrite genetic code. They're able to do what people are calling CRISPR functions and all that stuff, but that's all. Uh, very sophisticated control of AI computers, which are far beyond technology at this level, at least commonplace technology. I'm not saying that that doesn't exist here on Earth yet. I think it does, but we're talking about secret programs and black ops programs and things that most people will never, never know about. And if you do find out, you're in deep trouble. So, you know, we're, we're trying to lift some of that gain. Okay, and if you have any questions of the kind, uh, when will the MedPod technology be available or is it already available on, on Earth? You have to wait for the next video where actually Yasky responds some of these questions. Because apart from describing in detail how this wet pot technology works, she also responds some questions. And I also took some of your questions from the audience and she responded some of those. So just be patient for the part one, it will be quite uh, detailed. Okay, Dale. Well, would you like to uh, say anything else? Sorry that I don't have any specific technical question to you because, I, as as everybody knows, I am not technically skilled, so I don't even know what to ask. Uh, I just hope that you can just expose it all, share everything you want to share, and um, anything else you would like to comment on or or share at this point. Well, I'm always looking to keep uh, ideas uh, from uh, the listeners and people that are, are viewing us as to their thoughts on how something like this could be funded on my level. Obviously, I'm not wealthy. I don't have the ability to, to fund these things and do them. I mean, I can bring them up and I can, you know, uh, basically I do what Tesla did. I build the things in my mind. I watch them work. I know what they're going to do. But, you know, it's a long way from actually a, a real device. So, you know, I, I pretty much got the details worked out. But uh, when it comes to funding these things and physically getting them operational, that's a little bit different. And as I said, what I envisioned was a simple program whereby maybe a, uh, you're limited so that a person can give maybe $5 or $10 as a donation toward what we think is a good project or a good cost. 
the point being is that those kind of donations people are not going to miss. It's like buying a cup of coffee, okay? And so nobody's going to get mad or sued. Nobody's looking for a big return on an investment. There's no controls being put in place and demands upon the project, which often happens when you're doing a uh, uh, a business project, okay? And you've got investors and everything. This is not Tesla like Elon Musk, and we've got investors that need to be satisfied. This is a very, very simple approach. Uh, and I think that maybe a, a give back program would be that every person that maybe donated or gave a little bit would then receive a ticket or a number or whatever so that they would be allowed to be among the first to use the technology once it's given fruition. So uh, then those people have a little bit of give back in that respect. But otherwise, it's just a, I, I'm open to suggestions for a simple program to fund these things without having the pressures of the the investment and the funding and so forth. So that we can try and bring these things to fruition without any issues. Okay. Uh, but hey, you took my money and you didn't do this or what, you know what I'm saying is we want to avoid corporate issues, nor, uh, or, or should I say, we should want to avoid, let's make this big and public. So that the whole world knows about it and that they can all walk in and shut us down and throw everything away and I go bye bye or disappear. You know, so I have to be careful in how this is accomplished. I'm a little guy playing in the garage, you know, I, I got a state low profile. Yeah, yeah, well, low profile, but now we are making this interview and, you know, and your idea is, is, is going to be known to the people. And well, as you know, they are always watching <laughs> their controllers. So and that's, that's okay, Jean. That's very okay. Uh, because at this point, we're just talking. I haven't done anything. I haven't stepped over any line. But I also am willing to give the technology freely to others to develop or do whatever they wish to. Once we've got prototypes that do whatever we say they do. And if it's just a meditation device, then that's what it is. You know, so... We're not going to worry about that at this point. We're not going to change the world. We're not threatening any of the big corporates or any of the people in charge. You know, we're just a little blip on the radar. But, and we talk about this kind of stuff between us all the time. So it, it's not a big deal. At least I don't foresee it as being a big deal. Okay, Dale. Um, if if there is anything else, uh, if there is nothing else you would like to mention, then we will close this part of the video. Uh, if anybody is interested in cooperating uh, with Dale, then I'm going to provide the email address in the description box, um, okay, under this video, and you can uh, get in touch um, with Dale and see what can be done to proceed with this idea. Is, is that correct? Is it okay if I give your email? Yeah, she do that. She's got uh, the email address. She'll put that out. I'd just like to state, remember, ladies and gentlemen, I am one person, and I'm doing a whole lot between working with my family up there, working with Doja and the Cosmic Agency, the whole thing. I get thousands of emails. I can't respond to everything. But if I can, I'll at least say hello. All right? Uh, you know, but uh, please understand those limitations, and don't get mad if you don't hear from me right away or at all. Uh, it's the same thing along with Gia doing the videos. We do the best we can, but we're one person. And it's sometimes really, really tough to try and keep up. And we do appreciate everybody's enthusiasm. We really, really do. Uh, you know, we're doing this as best as we can, but free without any hopes of return. We just want to get it. And Bozer does that every single day. Kills herself putting out videos, as you guys know. So, you know, it, it's uh, it's part of the mission that we've undertook. And, uh, you know, so we just ask you to keep that in mind. That's all. Thank you, Dale. That's very sweet. Thank you very much for, uh, for your attention, everybody. And stay tuned for the next video, which is going to be Yaski describing the wet pot technology in Taigeta and then some of the questions and some of your questions as well. Uh, I think that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dale. And thanks, everybody. Until, until we meet again. Bye bye.